Oh, hello. Welcome. I'm Stacy. This is Art Journal Life. And I went early because I touched my phone and it <laughs> started the video stream. So here we are. I'm so excited about today. I can't even tell you how excited I am. We're going to play with this Power Wax. It's called Power Text and or power text and we are I am going to show you all the exciting things that I learned today we're going to play water-based cold wax it's washable it has no VOC which is I looked up what it meant and I don't remember <laughs> uh, you can buy this on Amazon or elsewhere uh, it's a totally fun product this, I'm so excited about this today because I didn't expect it to be so cool, but it's totally cool. So this product is something you have to mix it with something acrylic, not oil, but you can mix it with sand. You can mix it with texture things. You can mix it with acrylic ink. I think you can mix it with watercolor pigments. Let's see if it listed, uh, it's for mixed media, glazing, photo sealing, frame, and furniture finishing. The proportions of medium to pigment depend largely on the characteristics of the pigments and the desired effects of the artist. Powertex is an artist quality satin finish protective coating for use over paintings to fill crackles on paintings, etc. Let harden for several days and buff with a soft cloth. Use warm water and soap to clean your tools. Contains no VOC. So there's no toxic chemicals in there, I guess is what that means. So again, earlier I was playing with it. This is mixed with various paints that I had here on my desk. And you use a palette knife. I have a jelly plate so that I could use it as a um, palette. And I laid down things on here so you could see what happens when we play with this. So this is some of those Tim Holtz paper dolls. This is water soluble Lyristic right here. Down here I wrote with a permanent Micron pen which is um, archival ink. I believe it's India ink. Uh, I do have this spatula but I use this mostly for gluing. Uh, this is what you're going to use most I believe. So okay here we are still online. Yay. Hi, Donna. Um, and this is what we're going to play with. So I am going to get started. So I'm just going to lay out some paint. So what I love about this in this process is I've always wanted to do encaustics, but it's very tool heavy. I think you need a lot of things to get started. Uh, when you do encaustics, that's wax layering over your art pieces and it creates a depth of field so it makes it look like it's deep in the painting which it is when you get finished because you're putting layers upon layers of this wax and it's hot wax and it doesn't come out easy your tools um, I'm sure can't be cleaned with soap and water you have to work at getting them clean some other way uh, and this is totally soap and warm water cleanable. I, when I was playing with this page, I did wet my brush. And I'm going to say that if the brush is damp or wet, it makes it a little chunky, like very slightly chunky and not seemingly as smooth. Uh, so I chose bright colors just so I could show you what's happening here. And here's what happened here. So this is layer upon layer. I wanted to see what would happen. And I don't know if you can see it, but I think that I could keep layering on top of here. It would be kind of cool. Um, but I love this effect. Also, it extends the time for your uh, paint to dry. So this doesn't dry quick. And I did try drying it with I did try drying it with a dryer at one point and it does melt. So you don't want to use a dryer on it. This is the power tech. This is like 
consistency of a soft lipstick. It's very creamy and very beautiful, if you ask me. Now, I love texture, so, you know, I'm going to love this. All you need is a brush, this, which is a, you know, palette knife, and you take a little of the power text, and depending on what you want out of your paints, you pick a paint. This is a more opaque paint. I think this is a medium opaque, and this is translucent. So that's uh, how it's going to show up mixing with the power text. Now, this is going to be the more paint you put in, the more colorful it's going to be, and the more opaque it will be, depending on how opaque or transparent. Does that make sense? If you have questions, make sure you ask them. I do have my, um, so I'm just mixing this. I do have my iPad on so I can read comments today, which I didn't have yesterday. Okay, so you mix it up, and I'm going to start here, and we're just going to put a layer here. So this is a more translucent paint. Now I'm using the palette knife, but you can put it on with a brush. So this is what it looks like. I'm going to try to get as close as I can so you guys can see what this, what's happening here. Now this, I'm just going to uh, keep experimenting. I get excited about experimenting. So this is the permanent India ink which has dried and I'm just picking up this and I'm just going over it to show you it doesn't run and it creates this thin. Now I could dip this in water. I learned earlier I don't really want to do that because once you do it kind of gets a little chunky if the brush is too wet. So I'm just going to wipe it off on my towel here and then I'm going to mix another color with this. So I'm going to put a little down here. Now, the more color, the more pigment, the more color you put in, the more opaque it's going to get. So you can control what you get by putting in less of the color. So the less paint you put in, the more translucent it will be. So this is a thin amount of that paint and let's put in a little more and see what happens. I'm going to put this in. See if it gets a little more translucent there. Now I'm mixing colors here because I only have one brush and here you go. So this is more translucent. This is more color. Let's put a little more on here. And as I spread it thinner, clearly more translucent. Now the next color I'm going to use. So, well, first let's do this. I, cause I did the Tim Holtz paper dolls over here because I wanted to see how much texture I could get with that wax. So I am going to just go over the paper dolls with this and see if it gets that far away look. Now, I think also I want to show you what happens. You could see what started to happen here. So the smudge, the smudge is just a little bit. This is a water soluble Lyra graphite stick. And it's smudging ever so slightly because this isn't really that wet. It's smooth. It is not wet, but it is smudging in there. So if that bothers you, you wouldn't use that. I am going to take my next color. This is a more opaque paint. This is Blick Studios paint, and they call this semi-opaque. So it's not completely, but it's, you know, semi done. I'm going to pick a little of this up. I'm going to mix it with it. So I'm just going to tell you that I had a blast 
playing with this earlier. I did all kinds of stuff. I'm going to show you at the end some of my results that I thought were very cool. So I'm just mixing the paint and I'm going to show you And this is what happens with a semi-opaque paint. So you can still see some things through it, which means you can have things underneath and they'll shine through depending on how much, how opaque your paint is. Now I loved this look, but here's the Again, I'm putting on a thinner layer, but here's what happens with that water soluble uh, Lyra graphite stick. So it bleeds a little bit and that could be a cool effect depending on what you're trying to get. So you could see this is a little more opaque than this and this. So these were uh, tra more transparent. This one's the most transparent. This takes a while to dry. I'm not going to lie, you have to be patient with this, um, but one more. I'm going to do one more. I'm going to do one more magical, or what I think is a magical thing. I have a stencil here, and I'm going to pick up some of this paint, and actually, you know what? I'm going to do it with the palette knife. So let's do... Let's just do this. Okay. Now, I don't like the coverage with my palette knife, so I'm just going to brush through. And there you go. So, um, oh, forgive me for that sound. Uh, okay, so that's a, with a brush or a palette knife. Again, these take a while, so you have time to get these cleaned up. They take a while to dry. Uh, one more thing I was going to do, and I totally forgot. <laughs> Um, I'm going to brush this off here. Oh, I do know what I was going to do. Okay, so this is how it works with stencils. You brush it on. You can make it more or less. It will dry textured like this. You can make it more or less uh, blotchy like that, depending on what you use for your either a brush or a palette knife. I didn't like the way my palette knife was working. It's this kind of oblong shape palette knife so that's why I use the brush but this will dry and it will be raised a little bit and I love that in my journals and here's oh here's the other thing so you could take it while it's wet and you can scratch into it also with various objects you may have on hand whatever those may be so um, let's scrape into this so you can see. And there you go. And this will dry like that. It doesn't run. It's very smooth and very fun. Okay, so that's a bunch of ways that we could try using it. You can use it as paint. I'm pretty sure once dry you could paint over it also. But I haven't proven that yet. So I won't, I'll try not to speak out of turn. How's that? Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I did after I was done. So I kind of mixed all my paints on here. On my gel plate. And now 
I'm going to do this and not leave it very long. But I think that you'll have a better result if you let it dry good on here. Again, this takes a while. They say on the outside of the canister that it takes or the jar that it takes a few days to dry. And I wouldn't, I'm not surprised by that. Okay, now I am going to, hmm, last time I put some paint down on top of it, but this is still wet. So I'm going to try it with just a piece of paper here. And let's see how it does. Now I'm going to just keep pushing on it and I'm going to show you what I did earlier today. So this, which I just loved, this is what I pulled up off my plate. I would say this is dry at this point, but when I was done doing what I just did here, this is what I pulled up off this plate. And I kind of, it came up chunky, textured, pulled up old paint, it didn't pull up old paint, you know, it's kind of a mixture of things on there. And I just love this. I, I'm going to make... I'm going to make a journal with that, whether I use it as a cover or in the journal, I'm not sure, but I so was in love with that. I hope this one comes out as good. So I'm going to stick this in water and then show you how nice this cleans off because I think it's actually amazing. So if you had those pigment powders, uh, I'm thinking even, uh, ooh, I didn't think of this to bring any, but uh, graphite sticks or uh, ink tense blocks, you could scrape off some of the pigment and uh, color the like, the power text with it. Okay, this is what this is what came off my plate. This is what's still there. It's super wet right here. I, I could try to lift up more. Maybe that's what I'll do. The power text by itself cannot be used. It has to be mixed with something. So they sell power, the company power text, I guess is the company. And they sell sand and other mediums that you can mix with it that create like a um, white layer on your art. Okay, so I'm going to leave this like this, but, and you can see that it's still wet. It's shiny in spots. I'll clean all that up later, but there you go. Even cleaning it off the plate was amazing. And I didn't even use my brayer. I just spread it. But again, this is um, maybe not as cool as this one. I'm not sure, but I liked both of them. I liked the way they both came out. So this is me today playing with power techs. Uh, and here you go. It's water-based cold wax. It cleans up with soap and water. It's non VOC. Uh, you have to mix it with something. So acrylic paint, pigments, anything like that. Uh, and you, depending on how dark you make the pigments or how much paint you use, the ratio, is up to you. I mean, it will work with a very small ratio of, of the power wax or a lot of the power wax it to make it thinner and more opaque and more translucent as opposed to opaque. You can make designs with and scratch into it, which I love. Uh, I wanted to see how much depth I could get. That's why I tried it with these paper dolls from Tim Holtz. And this is me spreading it through a stencil. This was a uh, India ink pen, permanent. And this was what using a graphite Lyra stick, which is water soluble, looks like through it. So it bleeds it a tad, but not a lot. So I think there's a lot we couldn't do with this. I am 
filled with ideas and experiments, but I think we have to let things dry so we can put layers and layers over top of it. I'd like to put a layer over top of this and see what happens. This part here, so from here down, has three layers. So it has the original color, and then I spread yellow, and then I spread orange. And you can't really see that through there, but you can feel how waxy it is. It says to wait three days or two days and buff it. So I'm going to try that. But I think you could put layer over layer and it would be super cool. These are my experiments for today. I hope that you enjoyed this. Uh, I hope that you'll have fun using it. I can't wait to really delve into it a little bit more. Uh, I think it's super fun. You don't have to use bright colors. I chose bright colors for the camera and that's why we have bright colors on there. And you can even spread it with your fingers. Again, you have to be patient because it has to dry. That's my, that's it. That's all we got. So depending on the paint you use, how much paint you add, whether it becomes translucent or opaque, how many layers, that all changes the outcome. So I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, everybody, have a really great weekend. I look forward to seeing you next week. And I think I'm going to get back to maybe doing some of these lives and maybe doing full on videos again. Um, I hope to do some experimenting uh, with mediums, with uh, my journals. I have some ideas going forward that I want to work on and experiment with. So this is giving me more, even more ideas. So I think I am going to go back to full on regular videos and then also these lives. I'll keep you posted. Thanks for joining me today. Have a great weekend and I will talk to you next week. See you on Monday.